Hi everybody, welcome to Safe Diving. So weeks ago I spoke about my own childhood and how I was first introduced to scuba diving, but in that video I kind of stopped just before I went professional. Um, so yeah, in this video we're gonna talk about uh, yeah my sort of professional career and how I became professional. Um, so yeah, so if we roll back the clocks to it's about 2009, um, kind of around there, I'm a, a rescue diver, a paddy rescue diver, working for a dive center in Ipswich, uh, Suffolk, called Dive Line. Um, which you might actually see soon. I'm actually planning a visit with my camera to see those guys. Um, so you can probably see where I sort of learn almost everything I know about scuba diving um, in the next coming weeks. Um, so yeah, Diveline is an old school dive center. Jeff, the man in um, in charge, he's a, a former Navy diver who used to dive in like the proper brass helmets. Um, he's been doing it forever. But um, because Diveline had been around for a very long time, it had relationships with pretty much all of the brands out there, at least the big brands. So I was exposed to a wide range of different dive equipment. They also ran partial pressure gas blending, so analyzing gases and dealing with pure oxygen just became second nature for me. Uh, Diveline also serves all sorts of different diving equipment, all sorts of different brands, so I was exposed to the insides of regulators, the insides of BCDs, dive computers, and all sorts of things, including cylinder testing as well. Um, so soon after sort of starting there, they put me on a Apex servicing course, um, along with a, a DP V servicing course, so I got used to uh, sort of servicing those bits, or at least how they worked on the inside. Um, it may be different where you come from, but over here, if you want to be a servicing technician, uh, you need to complete a servicing course for each individual brand and that certificate only applies to you working at that dive center. So if you move um, to a different dive center, you go back to square one and you can't service that anymore. Um, it, it's an annoying system, but um, it just seems to be the way it works. Um, but it makes a world of difference knowing how regulators work, what all the little things do on the inside, and basically just how to fix small problems or at least identify problems. But on top of that, Diveline has classrooms uh, and also their very own indoor heated swimming pool. Most dive centers you see, they have to hire a local swimming pool for a few hours and uh, and your students are just kind of swimming around with like sticky band-aids on the floor and all that stuff is it's not great. Um, they only get a few hours once a week. Um, so yeah, you, you can be sort of rushed through your kind of skills. It's like, oh, come on, we, we only have like 10 more minutes. You kind of have to get this skill done. Otherwise you have to wait until completely next week. Um, but with their own dedicated diving pool, and it was specifically built for scuba diving, it's three meters deep. It's got sort of everything that you need. Um, I spent a lot of time in the water and around students as well. And that's where a lot of professional level divers, or at least starting out professional divers kind of lack that experience. They can be the best divers in their own right. They can dive and do their own very clever, fancy things. But if they don't know how to interact with students and convey their skills onto their students, then they're never going to be a good instructor. You need experience with students before becoming an instructor because you learn all these little kind of uh, sort of all, all the little nuances and you can kind of see something before it can happen because you've seen these traits. Oh, that student's about to panic if I don't intervene. So it's very important to gain all of that experience as much as you can with students before you even think about becoming a dive master or a, um, an instructor. When I moved on to my dive master course, I was doing it with a guy called Alan, uh, whose father was an American military dive instructor who worked at a nearby military base. And we just put each other through all sorts, in and out of the water, um, which was great to prepare us for whatever diving could throw at us. Um, because you'd just be swimming along and you, your mask would be ripped off or something. Um, your tank would suddenly switch off. You just, it, it practically like drown proofed you. 
we'd be in the water most days and uh, and we'd see students uh, sort of at least every week and um, once or twice a month we'd go up and um, and sort of help uh, with open water courses in an old brick quarry called Peterborough called Gildenberg uh, where I learned to dive um, so we had plenty of experience in just really lousy conditions with plenty of students which made us really good dive masters at the end after becoming a dive master, um, that's kind of the level that I like originally in my mind kind of planned. Okay, I'll reach dive master, but but that that will be kind of it. I never had that much ambition to just become an instructor. I didn't really see the point in it, so I kind of stayed there uh, at dive line and I worked as a dive master for a good year or so, just building relationships with the brands, um, building my skills as a diver, learning about the equipment and everything. Uh, it was at this point that I uh, sort of moved on to twins, so twin cylinders. Uh, my instructor used them, so it just kind of made sense to me as a, a natural progression, but I decided to choose twin seven 300 bar tanks, um, which in retrospect wasn't the best choice because even if I was filling them up myself, you never get a true 300 bar fill. Um, so the benefit of them wasn't really there. Uh, around this time is when uh, sort of side mounts really sort of came out of the caves and became the latest fad in scuba diving. Um, so I signed up for a course with Blue Ocean Divers in Kent, uh, who are actually in my local dive center right now, which is an odd coincidence. Um, and I learned the new art of side mount diving. And it was around this time when I decided to become an instructor. So the main drive was actually a young student called Madeline. Um, she struggled with her math skills on the weekend course with an instructor. So her mum brought her in midweek, uh, sort of with me, to just sort of practice in the water. And she did it first try, sort of full on sort of mask removal and replacement. Didn't, didn't even phase her. Um, we practiced it a whole bunch of times and we spent some time sort of practicing other skills and just sort of playing about in the water to make their trip worthwhile. Um, and mum was thrilled, only I couldn't actually sign her off. Um, she, Madeline would have to come back again for an instructor to actually witness the skill so that they could sign it off. And that was kind of my light bulb moments to actually become an instructor. Uh, so soon after I did some research and I signed up for an IDC or an instructor development course at Gildenberg. Uh, Gildy was where I taught and um, the conditions aren't great, which is actually the best place to uh, sort of learn and test your skills. Becoming an instructor in beautiful, clear blue water is great and all, but if you're suddenly plunged into zero visibility, you don't have the experience to become a great instructor. So yeah, you, you really need to learn in that environment and then anything else is, is a bonus. So if you do want to become a great instructor, you want to train in the worst conditions possible. If you can cope there, then blue water's a cinch. IDCs can either be really long and drawn out or short and intensive. So I've been working at a dive center for a good year or two at this point. Uh, so I just signed up for the intensive course, uh, which was nine days of instructor training and the following two days straight after that uh, were the exams. So I was the only instructor candidate on this course, which is very unusual. Um, so all of the focus was right on me, which was nice. It was personalized. Some people actually pay extra to have one-on-one -on -one tuition, but for the instructor course, um, for presentations and things, you don't have anybody to prepare with. You don't have anyone else to kind of bounce ideas off of. So it was quite intense. Um, and this was in March as well. Um, so like just the dead of winter, it was drizzly, it was cold, it was horrible. I was staying in a portable cabin that was probably older than I was and it didn't have running water. So I'd be sleeping in a bed in a sleeping bag with a space heater just to keep me warm. Um, so I had to demonstrate snorkeling skills in a dry suit as well in open water. That was unusual to say the least, but I completed the course. Um, I don't remember a whole lot from my actual IDC. It was, yeah, nine days of um, sort of nothing but uh, sort of talking about becoming an instructor. But um, all I really remember was sort of mainly about knowing how to find information in the instructor manual and demonstrating the skills that I'd likely be tested on. Uh, I did learn to take my time whilst demonstrating skills. I was taught to break 
every single skill, even to the mass partial flood, into five separate parts and actually pause between each part whilst over exaggerating every single motion to make it really obvious. I was also taught to demonstrate surface skills without talking, uh, which was quite testing. It is quite hard to do how to assemble a scuba unit without saying anything. That's a weird thing. Um, for instructor, you don't have to do the same watermanship skills that you do for dive master, which is quite nice. Uh, for those of you that don't know, dive masters have to do a lot of swimming and treading water uh, to make sure that they're physically fit and able to, uh, to do it. And you're graded sort of one through five for each of them to make sure that you're fit and able. Uh, for instructor, you just have to do like one surface swim as far as I remember. All it really was is a swim. Uh, I can't remember the distance. Someone will put it down in the comments below. But you have to do a certain distance uh, wearing mask fins and snorkels. And the only real sort of caveat is you're not allowed to lift your head out of the water. That's pretty easy for a dive instructor. Um, we did this at a, a local swimming pool because it was it was a bit nicer than the open water and I imagine it's a bit safer. Um, but my instructor actually lost count of how many lengths I've done. So um, I'm kind of head down. I don't want to lift my head out of the water and um, I'm kind of counting in my head how many lengths I have to do. And um, yeah, they, they'd lost count of how many lengths I've done. So they actually made me do two more just to be safe, which is nice of them. Um, the exam itself, uh, the sort of following two days after you do the IDC, um, like all the instructor candidates gather uh, sort of once a year or something to um, sort of one sort of certain area and they test all of the instructor candidates sort of then and there. The exam itself, because um, there's all the different parts. The first bit is a written exam. Uh, the, the exam I actually found quite easy. Uh, I mean, I'd literally just spent the best part of a week purely focusing on passing these exams and just reading nothing but the instructor booklet. Um, so yeah, I found them quite easy. Um, so um, so I was expecting sort of something a bit sort of more. Um, the, the first thing was that written exam. They sit you down in a big exam hall and you have an hour or two to complete this test. Um, I finished with at least half an hour to go. So I figured maybe I missed something. But after going through all of the questions and all of my answers twice, uh, apart from just sitting there, I just got up and I handed my answer sheet in. They went through my answers and uh, and they told me then and there that I passed, which was really nice. And um, and they told me to go see my course director, which I didn't think much of. Um, you see, what they hadn't told me um, was my medical, because uh, we have to have uh, sort of dive medicals to make sure that yeah on the inside we're fit and healthy. Uh, it actually expired the week beforehand, and um, and they thought the best choice, the best idea, was to keep it a secret from me and uh, and drive me up to a dive doctor straight after the exam. This was actually a blessing in disguise because I basically skipped the presentation part of the uh, sort of examination and, uh, and I had all of that kind of journey time to prepare for it, do all the kind of book reading and studying. Um, I did my physical, uh, they, they do all the like step aerobics tests and all that kind of stuff. They test your eyes, they test your ears and things. Um, and uh, then we drove straight back again, jumped in the swimming pool for the pool section. Um, so this, the pool section where you basically have to demonstrate some skills as if everyone else is a student. This actually confirmed my confidence because watching the other candidates demonstrate skills made me feel great. If that was the caliber of other students looking to pass as an instructor, then I'd be fine. That was all completed and uh, all I had to do was the presentation uh, in my own classroom with one of the exam uh, the examiners, so that was very comfortable. The other candidates had to do it in front of like the rest of the group. So for me, it was just one-on-one -on -one and I was somewhere that I sort of recognized and I was very comfortable in. So that was a huge benefit for me. Uh, the following day was um, actually open water day and my instructor Dave, uh, the guy that taught me uh, sort of open water and advanced and rescue and even dive master, he actually drove all the way up to uh, sort of be with me and cheer me on, which was really nice of him. Um, again, it felt a lot like sort of jumping through some pretty big hoops for me because I've been diving at Gildenberg for years and uh, this is where we're being tested. I've been sort of teaching people and doing pr practically demonstrating skills for students um, sort of in Gildenberg anyway. So this was really well in my comfort zone. 
So after demonstrating a few skills and assessing a few skills in open water, I was signed off and I was a fully qualified instructor. Um, not much actually changed really, only the amount of paperwork that I had to fill out um, and my signature actually changed. My signature used to be a very sort of eloquent uh, sort of affair and uh, sort of all fancy, but when you have to sign about 12 different times for each and every student, um, my signature became much simpler and much quicker. It's very easy to get sort of carpal tunnel syndrome because you have to sort of sign or oh, if you go to your um like the first page of your um, of your logbook, your um, your student logbook, you'll see how many times your instructor had to sign off every single section, every single skill. Um, yeah, your your signature gets really basic after a while. Um, but I taught here in the UK uh, as well as Egypt and the Red Sea quite often. Um, after a while I got a little bit stir crazy because not really much changed. It was just uh, every other week it was a new set of, uh, sort of open water students. Occasionally you'd see an advanced but um, yeah and very rarely you'd get a, a kind of a rescue course. So I did start to get a little bit stir crazy and didn't see much progression for me. I didn't fancy throwing any more money at Paddy uh, doing specialty instructor courses or staff instructor and then on to course director. I, I barely thought that instructor was really kind of where I wanted to be. So yeah, course director was never my, um, my kind of ideal. I knew that it just wasn't the path for me. And whilst I love teaching and I still love teaching students, um, I decided to quit my job and um, look for work elsewhere just to kind of mix things up really. I went on a trip uh, diving in the Arctic Circle, which was nice and different. Um, the first morning where you like open the, uh, the, the curtains, it's dark outside and uh, it was snowing sideways. Um, so yeah, they were lovely diving conditions, um, but that actually turned out to be a really great trip. Um, this was about the same time that my sister had made a, uh, a similar decision to quit her job in London and, uh, and emigrate to Australia. So that was a, a sort of a big, uh, big change for her. Before that, we were um, invited to go on a trip to uh, to BVI, the British Virgin Islands, uh, which was just an amazing trip. Uh, I took the group scuba diving a couple of times and. Um, and out there whilst my sister uh, kind of flew to the other side of the world, I actually found a job uh, sort of listing for Simply Scuba, uh, which I'd always heard about. You hear about sort of Simply Scuba in the industry. Um, I don't think they were quite as much on YouTube. They did a lot of uh, sort of product uh, videos, but uh, it was less like lifestyle stuff. It was more sort of purely product based. And um, and I'd heard about Simply Scuba in the industry, oh, Simply Scuba as an online shop and whatnot. Um, but I'd never really sort of known that much about them. So I applied for the job and um, and yeah, I, I evidently got it. Um, now I've already taken up enough of your time talking about myself on this video, but in the next video, I'm going to talk about what I did at Simply Scuba, how I got that job. Uh, if you want any advice on how to get into the industry, then of course, yeah, just let me know down in the comments below because there are lots of different career paths for scuba divers and um, yeah, don't forget to check out my Teespring shop for safe diving merchandise. If you need a new diving t-shirt or a phone case or, or whatever, I even do a, um, a hoodie for dogs and all sorts. Um, who knows? The link's down in the comments below. Check out the, uh, the Teespring link. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.